And do you remember that movie, The Wizard of Oz? It had quite a cast of characters. And of course, you have Dorothy and her little dog Toto, and they're trying to get back to Kansas. She has the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion that's with her. And then you have the Wicked Witch of the West, and she was the baddest and the meanest of all. And if you recall, the Wicked Witch had these, uh, this cluster of flying monkeys that would surround her, and they would do whatever she would tell them to do. Clearly, she was the one who was in charge, and she was uh, highly controlling, and they were just there to do her bidding. Well, you bring it on up to where we are right now, and as we talk in pop psychology, then uh, as we discuss narcissism, we realize that narcissists can have what we would refer to as the flying monkeys who can surround them. Let's take, for example, a family unit. And it may be one really large and in-charge person is in that family that's uh, highly narcissistic, very controlling, and they make sure that they punish anyone that's not the same as they are. And so many of the other family members may fall in line. Or it could be that you have a political system and you have that person who's ascending to the top and even though others may not like the way they think or do things, well, they're the ones that has the power so they go and fall in line with them. Or it could be a sports team and you have that overwhelming coach that treats people terrible, but they win, so you have to fall in line there. You can have it in churches, you can have it in civic organizations, you can have it in social groups. Anytime where there are a cluster of people that are there, uh, the narcissist is the one that likes to show up and be at the top of the heap and often they will gather around them, their flying monkeys who will say yes, and then when, uh, uh, when there's something that seems to be out of the ordinary or unusual, they don't push back. They just kind of go along because they've decided, uh, I'm too weak, that person's too strong, there's too much other secondary gain that I might have, so I'm just going to kind of go along with the program. And the narcissist is thinking, yeah, that's the way I like it. Keep it up. And some of them actually do, and sometimes for a long time. Now, I want to get into a little bit more about what makes that flying monkey be the way they are. Uh, I do want to make you aware, though, that we do have some resources for you. Right below the video, you're going to see some links to a couple of books that I have. One is entitled, When Pleasing You is Killing Me. And then there's another one entitled, The Anger Trap. And then my partner, Laura Carranza, has a book. We have a link of hers there called Ugly Love. And so I hope that you'll find books like that to be helpful in your library. And then we'd invite you to subscribe to our channel, too, so that we can send you uh, notices whenever new videos come out. Now, let's take a look at people who allow themselves to go into that role of the flying monkey, the ones who actually prop up and play an enabler's role towards the narcissist. See, let's keep in mind that there's, there's got to be something in it for them, and basically it's of a vicarious nature. Uh, the flying monkeys themselves may not be strong enough and powerful enough to have that position of control and dominance, so they, they are able to do so through that other dominant person, that narcissist. And so, first of all, uh, the flying monkey is very willing to allow the narcissist to say what's correct. And they'll just kind of uh, uh, hand over their sense of uh, correct thinking and say, okay, what she said or what he said. And they just allow that person to do the thinking for them. The, the narcissist sets the, the norm and the flying monkey says, okay. The, the flying monkey can take glee when the narcissist is a bully or when the narcissist is overwhelming. Like I say, they might not feel strong enough themselves to be the, uh, the top dog, but it's like, but I'm on the top dog's team. And so uh, thinking that uh, to go against the narcissist would mean defeat, they just stick around for that reason. The uh, flying monkey can lack analytical thinking. Uh, it, it's like they, they have to turn off any kind of depth of thought or uh, uh, contemplation and they just allow themselves to be shallow well, then uh, with, with something like that, you can also see that flying monkeys tend to overlook obvious red flags. There are times when outsiders might look into the narcissist cluster of people and folks surrounding them that outsider may say, 
what are you doing? Or why do you do this this way? Or, and uh, don't you see that there's an inappropriateness and all of them in unity will say, mm, no. And there are red flags, rudeness and condescension and inequities, but uh, the, the flying monkeys will just ignore that. Uh, in, uh, on top of it, flying monkeys make excuses on behalf of the narcissist. In fact, they'll explain it away and they're apologetics on behalf of the narcissist. Now, flying monkeys may actually fear the narcissist, uh, and sometimes it comes out, they can be quite defensive, uh, but then uh, most of the time they tend to suppress whatever emotion goes along with that. Sometimes flying monkeys complain behind the narcissist's back, but when given the opportunity to speak up and say something, they don't. Now, a flying monkey may come to you as an outsider and say, well, why don't you tell me what your thoughts and feelings are? And then if you say something that's contrary to the narcissist, they go tattletale on you. Do you see what I'm talking about? The narcissist loves to have these lackeys that are around, that the, the narcissist gets to be the one that does the thinking, and a type of group thing comes into play. And so let's suppose, whether it's in a family system or some other kind of social structure, you're watching this and you may be tied to that narcissist, but over time you begin thinking, uh-uh, I, I, I can't do this. I feel like I'm losing a, a large piece of my soul. I don't want to participate anymore. I don't want to be anyone's flying monkey. Well, there are four things that I want you to be aware of as you go about uh, doing this. You're going to have to ex extricate yourself from that, uh, that group think that uh, is there. And uh, four things for us to look at. When you stand up and say, this is not something I can go along with anymore. This is not something I want to participate. Number one, be, be prepared to hear all sorts of statements of defense and denial. Keep in mind that the narcissist doesn't receive input. The narcissist has their own alternate view of reality. So when you stand up and say, this is wrong, or I disagree, or we can do better, or uh, you're being very cruel at times, then there's going to be a barrage of defense and justification. And of course, in doing so, you're going to be uh, blamed and accused and being told that you're ungrateful and things of that nature. So point number two, as you stand up against this group think that goes along with this whole flying monkey system, make sure you're willing to pay the, whatever the price might be when you say, I am opting out. And the price can be in at times very steep, very high. I've known people who have left jobs because they couldn't go along with that overwhelming narcissistic uh, system that was there. I've known people who have not gotten political appointments because they would dare to say, I, I, I don't need to go along with the party line here. There's something about this that just doesn't seem right. I've certainly known a lot of people who have been ostracized from their families. They may have that one very dominant person who keeps dictating how things are supposed to be inside the family. And so the price that you have to pay there is rejection. You're on the outside looking in. And it, it's, a, it's a high price, particularly when you're somebody that uh, wants to be connected in a healthy kind of way. And so uh, yet the other side is uh, the price of staying with the narcissist and being inside that flying monkey cluster is you lose yourself. Which brings us to uh, a third thought, and that is make sure you're willing to be an assertive person. Now, when you hear that word assertive, what kind of connotation does that word have for you? See, many people tend to think that if you're assertive, that just means you can speak rudely to others and say and do whatever you want. Well, that's not really assertive. That's aggressive anger, and that's a whole other topic for us to get into. But when you're assertive, it means that you do have your convictions and you are aware of what your valid needs are and you're willing to stand up for them. Now, part of the definition of assertiveness means you're gonna have a decency about you and a, a common sense and a respectfulness in the way that you do that, but it also means that there's a firmness that you're not gonna back away from. Sometimes assertiveness means that you set stipulations, you establish boundaries, you give yourself permission to act independently and so make sure as you're breaking away from the flying monkey cluster that you uh, are uh, prepared. You're going to need to hold on to your assertiveness. And then when the others push back and they demand that you explain why, part of your assertiveness may be to say, 
I don't feel like I have to give you an explanation since it's going to be shot down anyway. I've made a decision. It makes sense to me. I'm just going to stand firm. And when you're told that you're an idiot, keeping in mind that there's all that denial, then the uh, the response assertively is, you may think anything you want, uh, but the bottom line is, I'm making decisions that are right for me. That's your assertiveness. And then a fourth point I want you to make is, make sure that you have a high commitment to your own authenticity. Flying monkeys, as I mentioned earlier, tend not to do a lot of their own independent thinking. They don't have a lot of contemplation or analysis of who they are and where they're trying to go in life. But I'm hoping that you will have that deeper thought. And there'll be a sense that says, I know who I am, I know what I stand for, and what you see on the outside is going to be quite consistent with what I have on the inside. Narcissists and their flying monkeys, <laughs> they don't have that internal-external consistency. What you see on the outside may not have anything to do with what's going on on the inside. It just all depends on what they're trying to achieve in that moment, and it's never going to be good for you. Commit to being an authentic person, internally and externally consistent. Now, in doing so, you are going to show yourself to be other. And as you commit to having your own sense of, of uh, uh, determination and decisiveness, and you're going to uh, stay away from that group think, there is one quality that you'll be able to claim at the end of the entire process. And that's the quality of your freedom. Many times I've had people talk with me, whether again, it's with family or business or social or elsewhere, where they've decided to opt out of the group think and be their own separate person. They'll, they'll speak with me and say, you know, the anvil is off my chest. I can think for myself. I get to be me. See, I operate on the very simple assumption. I'm not very good trying to be somebody that I'm not. Flying monkeys, they're not being true to themselves. You don't have to be that. You can be your own separate independent person. I think you're going to like the results there much better.